Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be reviewing the Toyota Sequoia Capstone. Before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Larch Miller Toyota here in Murray, Utah, for giving me some time with this Sequoia. I'm going to include a link to the website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And then, on a side note, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a hybrid twin-turbo 3.4-liter V6 that goes through a 10-speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 19 around town and then 22 on the highway, with power outputs being 437 horsepower and then 583 pound-feet of torque. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, you guys can see how it's raised there on either side and a little bit in the center as well. It gives it a more muscular appearance and of course, I-Force backs. And then down below, really cool with the headlight design and a much more reasonable grille design compared to the Tundra. Got the blue and the Toyota logo to signify it's a hybrid. We do have parking sensors here at the bottom as well as fog lights. And putting it all together, let me know you guys think about the looks here with the capstone. Now around the side here, our tire wheel setup is 265, 50, 22 in the front and over in the rear. And you guys can see here with the wheels, you got the silver mixed with the metallic gray. I think that looks really sharp. And then body painted here with the fender flares. You can see the capstone badge here on the side. And then notice chrome on the mirror caps and the door handles and also with the window trim. And when we take a few steps back, you guys can see the full side profile here with the Sequoia. Now here's a quick look at the key fob. We have our lock and unlock function. We got the opening for the hatch and yeah, nothing on the back apparently. And popping into the rear of the Sequoia, you guys can see we have, well, some storage space. If you want more storage space behind the third row, they have a car called the Grand Highlander. Definitely better. Anyways, you've got these controls here to raise and lower the seats, which is nice. You have this movable shelf to help out with extending the storage because of the mess that is the four-wheel drive system and the battery pack here in the back. And then we've got a little outlet here in the back as well. And when you're all done, just press that and that'll lower the hatch right back down. Really cool taillight design here with the new Sequoia. And then you guys can see Sequoia down below. And then we do have parking sensors and we got the foot thing to open up the hatch. And putting it all together, let me you guys think about the looks with the Sequoia here. Now, take a look at the door panel. You guys can see soft touch trim here at the top. We have a sunshade for the rear passengers and the more soft touch down below. And we got this cool wood trim and power running boards. Also, that speaker looks fancy. Now, take a look at the seats. You can see the white trim at the top and then blacked out trim here at the bottom. There's leather on the grab handle there. Anyways, leg room here in the back is really good. We got a little storage pocket. We've got some more leather trim here with the cup holders. Our climbing controls here. We also have heated and ventilated seats. We've got some charging port action down below. And then you can see some cup holders right here. Now the third row, because the battery pack and everything is raised up compared to the second row here, so it is a little bit more cramped back there. Uh, and then last but not least, headroom, it's pretty good. Now take a look at the front door panel. You guys can see here with the soft touch trim at the top. We've got blind spot monitoring with the mirrors and then more soft touch trim down below. Got all of our window controls here with our mirror adjustments. The mirrors do power fold in and then more wood trim here with our memory seats. And then you got a speaker here for the sound system. And with the front seats again, notice the two-tone coloration, power adjustments here on the side. Also payload, 1,290 pounds for those of you that are wondering. And then we've got this for the running boards to turn that on or off. Your heated steering wheel control, gas cap release, that's for the outlet, your rear collision assist, and then got some nice soft touch trim here. And then I like the look of the vent steering wheel. Again, power adjustable. Now take a look at the steering wheel. It's perforated on either side so it gets slightly better grip and I like the texturing there at the top and at the bottom. We have our controls here for the adaptive cruise control and the lane keep assist as well as the volume and voice command controls. And then you guys can see the stocks here on the back. And then taking a look at the rest of the gauge cluster, fully digital. We can scroll through a few different menus here to see different bits of information on the Sequoia. And then we do have a tow haul mode we can pop into. And then we also have a sport mode, a normal mode and an eco mode. Now the Sequoia does have a 360 camera system resolution with it's good. We have trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel, tons of different viewpoints that you can go through here, which is great. It's a big vehicle, so it's nice that it has that. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system itself, we've got a shortcut bar here on the side. It does take a second for some of the pages to load up, but it's very user friendly. We got nice soft touch trim here on the dash. We also have a heads up display. And then we've got some wood trim here on the far dash. 
and then notice with the white coloration down below on the leather. And then good storage space in the glove box here. We've got analog controls here for the climate system. You also have heated and ventilated seat controls in that area and a little tuner, or rather volume control button. That's for your trailer assistant. And then you guys can see we've got our camera button. Turn that on, stability control, hazard lights, and then some blank switches. Shifter for that 10 speed automatic. And then underneath this wood trim, we've got some cup holders, which is definitely nice. Wireless phone charging pad right there. Drive line select here for the four wheel drive system. No four wheel auto with the Sequoia. And then we got a drive mode select right next to that. And then we have the center console with the little storage space up top, which is cool. And the nice padding on either side and then the window. Um, but the big thing is yeah, storage inside. And then this does have the camera rear view mirror, as you can see, and then a panoramic sunroof. So here's a window sticker for the Sequoia. Um, you guys can see the standard equipment with this capstone package. Not really a lot in terms of options you can add, but anyways, 83,230 is the total MSRP. And let's see how it drives. Let's talk about the visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood and hopefully that heads up display. Both of the mirrors, which do a blind spot monitoring. Throw the rest of the rear. And, well, let us set off in the Sequoia Capstone. The Rolls Royce of Toyotas, the Bentley of Toyotas, right? It's a fancy Toyota. We don't get the cool uh, centuries here in the US. So I know cause some people are gonna be like, Ben, that's the real Rolls Royce of Toyota. And fair enough, but yeah, we don't. We sadly just do not uh, get those here in the US. But anyways, first off, torque. It's pretty dang good. It's pretty dang good. Now aside from that, seats are really uh, comfortable. And you know, I've had a chance to live with uh, a Sequoia for a week, it was a TRD Pro. And I will say as like a daily driver, it's, it's really good. Um, comfortable suspension. And the thing I like the most about it, honestly, is this, this powertrain. I have been raving about this powertrain for a while, and that will continue uh, because I just, it's such a good engine. It's got really good uh, low-end grunt, and I think it sounds pretty good, too. I think that's another positive with it as well. And the steering, I mean, it's, it's light, so that makes driving easy, too. Yeah, the torque's just, it's so good. Like, you just, you just get into it a bit. <laughs> and it just moves, like the, just how this engine performs is so good. And obviously this is the, you know, has the hybrid component to it, which <laughs> does help out a bit. It does, it does help out a bit. So, to sum things up here with the Sequoia caps, and I know that was kind of a shorter drive, but running out of time here, sadly. Uh, I think this looks great on the outside. Um, I do still prefer the TRD Pro um, or the TRD Off-Road Sequoia in terms of the exterior stacks, but the TRD Pro is the coolest, but that's just my personal take there. And then the interior on this is super nice. Um, obviously it has all the luxury touches, so I think that's really cool. And it drives well. Um, it's it's very comfortable, and you know I don't really like. There's there's nothing there's nothing negative that I could say about the driving um, experience with the new Sequoia. The only thing that I could say about it is it still doesn't have tow hooks. 2024, no tow hooks. <laughs> it had to be said. But anyways, let me know you guys think about the capstone. And uh, let me know if this is your favorite Sequoia package. I'm still gonna stick with the TRD Pro personally, but yeah, let me know what you think.